Yes, how are you wherever you are? Today, I want us to talk about coronavirus. In Kenya and worldwide, it is quite a big problem. It is a pandemic because the virus has caused a lot of havoc the whole world. Every country is worried about coronavirus. Let's begin. Definition of terms. What is a virus? A virus is a a submicroscopic infectious agent that replicates on only inside the living cells of an organism. That means that the virus cannot multiply outside a living organism. Then that brings us a question. If somebody is dead with coronavirus, is that person infectious or not? That is a very controversial question. But now that we know the virus only replicates inside the living cell, so once the cell is dead, once somebody is dead, then the cells die. Of course, when somebody dies, we don't expect all the cells to die instantly. And that's why we have to take precautions because the virus might still be uh, replicating and probably that it might, be, it might be on the surface of the individual, depending on the state of death of the person. But for sure, if somebody is dead, then the virus will not be able to survive. That is to say, literally. So what is coronavirus? Coronaviruses are large family of viruses that are known to cause illnesses ranging from common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Therefore, most of the time, coronavirus is associated with some of the common uh, so-called common cold but common cold is also caused by another virus called rhinovirus so we also have another virus that causes a lot of problems especially the respiratory root that is syncytia respiratory pus that is srv so that means that there are so many other viruses that cause respiratory diseases as as much as this coronavirus pathogenesis when you're talking about pathogenesis it literally mean how the disease begin or develop epidemic is a disease that affect a large number of people within a community population or region pandemic is an epidemic that is spread over multiple countries or or continent and for a case we have coronavirus which is causing which is becoming which has become a pandemic initially coronavirus was an epidemic in china but now we are talking about the virus having spread all over the world prognosis this is the likely cause of a medical condition so if somebody is sick or somebody is dead of a virus we will say what is the prognosis or cause of death of a person or what is the prognosis or cause of sickness of somebody isolation Isolation is when somebody or somebody is set apart or separated from other person. So you just isolated. You are set apart. But guaranteeing is isolation of people outside of certain area to prevent the spread of diseases. So that means that you set people of that means that uh, people with the coronavirus can be together. But isolation means that person with coronavirus is kept alone so that is the big difference between isolation and quarantine about covid-19 in covid-19 co stand for corona v stand for virus and d for diseases covid-19 is a new disease caused by no a novel or new coronavirus that has not previously been seen in human being so the virus mainly targets the pulmonary pulmonary epithelial cells as it is initial site of infection remember viral infection 
have one characteristic that is specificity in terms of infection infection why do we say specificity because when we are going to learn later we realize that viruses have specific appendages that help them to sense specific molecules that are out there on different cells when we talk about hiv virus remember we talked about cd4 molecules so only cells with cd4 molecules can be attacked by hiv virus when it comes to this virus for a case then there are only specific molecules that this virus can only get attached to and therefore can penetrate on such cells and go and multiply inside those cells so when talking about gradual replication of virus results in exaggerated immune response triggering release of many pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemo chemokines this immune storm is responsible for multiple health hazards in the host ultimately leading to multiple organ failure so when you talk about covid 19 we are talking about the virus infecting the surfaces uh, the pulmonary epithelial cells that is the cells lining the surfaces of the respiratory system when you talk about the respiratory system we talk about the whole component of the respiratory system that is starting from the lungs going up to the nostrils or we start from the nostril going down to the lungs and specifically the alveoli so the alveoli are lined by special epithelial cells the nostrils are lined by special epithelial cells and these epithelial cells are the cells that this virus has preference over other cells and that's why if you decide to 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 go of course to consume this virus through the mouth it may not cause any problem because those cells that this virus have preference for are not there and the environment in the stomach is not ambient enough to allow this virus to multiply and cause this problem therefore the likelihood of you getting sick by consuming via oral of this virus is very very negligible very small transmission is usually via let's look at the signs and symptoms of course transmission is usually via airborne droplets to the nasal mucosa so that means that you need to have inhaled this specific droplets containing the virus for you to be sick with the virus so let's look at the signs and symptoms let's start from the mild mild the disease manifestation is mild and cannot be detected by imaging pro, uh, procedures at that stage the common signs and symptoms we have mild to high fever pneumatic condition may lead to respiratory elements and can be detected using x-ray and ct scan severe form of the covid 19 stressful respiration respiration rate higher than 30 per minute per minute in resting stage oxygen saturation is usually less than 93 percent pressure of oxygen in artery in arteries is less than 300 milligram of mercury critically severe symptoms failure of the respiratory organs leading to dependency on ventilators shock multiple organ fail failure patient needs intensive care monitoring and treatment let's look at the structure of the virus the virus is spherical or pleomorphic envelope particles containing single-stranded positive sense RNA associated with nucleoprotein with a capsid comprised of a matrix protein. It is very complex for anybody to understand this concept, but the whole idea states that the virus has a nucleic 
material. The viral nucleic material is surrounded by something else other than the capsid. So where uh, is anything that surrounds the virus other than the capsid coming from? It is coming from the infected cell. So when the virus comes out, it comes out with the membrane lining that cell that the virus has infected. That becomes an extra protection to the virus. And that's why we are calling this virus enveloped. So the envelope bears a club-shaped glycoprotein projection, as you can see on the image that I've provided for you. Helco means that it looks like a spring. That spring that uh, the shock for the, for the motorbike is normally circular in nature. So that spring will say that is how the virus nucleic material looks like. Then, on top of that spring, we have a capsid. A capsid is a proteinous covering that covers, covers the nucleic material of the virus. Then, on top of the capsid, we have an envelope that comes out, that is arrived, that, is, that, that comes from the infected cell. So, when the virus escapes, when you're looking at the viral replication mechanism, of course, when it has already formed and is coming out of the cell that it has infected, it comes out with part of the cell membrane that it has infected. So that offers extra covering, making it to be able to have that extra envelope that we are talking about now here. When you're talking about the spike glycoprotein S, and you're talking about the M protein, these are the externalia of the virus. When you're talking about hemagglutinin, esterase dimer, and you're talking about the envelope, RNA and, and uh, RNA and N protein and E protein. Basically, these are the components of the virus. But I would, I would like to focus more on the spike glycoprotein S. These are special sensors that this virus will sense the cell that is going to infect the cell that this virus is going to invade and go inside and multiply and produce more of these viruses. Remember, when you're looking at how the virus multiply, it is very, very simple. The virus penetrates the whole cell. So when it penetrates, it leaves the envelope outside, goes in with the capsid. Then once inside the cell, cytoplasm, the capsid is removed it's eject we only have now the nucleic material of the virus and for this case an rna positive sense rna material of the virus so once inside the cell then instead of that cell producing its own genetic material producing its own protein then it this virus captures the whole mechanism it, then it starts producing its own protein and the protein are very important for production of the viral protein, the viral capsin, the viral enzyme. All these are proteins in nature. So basically, once the virus has formed, then it will assemble and exit. And for this case, the coronavirus will exit by budding. That means that budding comes, it comes out so nicely with the extra coat that it gets from the host cell. Multiplication. The virus replicates locally in the cell of the ciliated epithelium, causing cell damage and inflammation in the pulmonary, liver, and kidney. Remember, the inflammation starts from the pulmonary. Then spreading will affect the liver, kidney, and the heart. Then the new virus exits the host by budding from the host cell membrane. This is what you can see and this is how the virus has been able to achieve by the end of the day. It will have, of course, the first thing is uncoating. Uncoating means that uh, the virus uncoats the, 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 and releases the genetic material 
adjective material is available uh, for assembly of course of, of course uh, the genetic material is available for in, to be for it to be integrated within the host cell so once it has been integrated because this is a positive sense rna what a positive sense rna means that it is easier for it to be able to be integrated uh, for protein synthesis and once the protein synthesis has happened then the proteins specifically that are very important for the virus are made and we said the protein for this case are the capsid the capsid protein are required the enzymes are proteins in nature and this is what is going to be made by the virus uh, nucleic material then we'll have protein uh, translation of course translation will happen thereof and then it will happen there will be something called exocytosis where the virus now will be released through that mode so when you're looking at that that means that the virus is now a complete uh, virus that can be able to infect other cells once it's been released out there let's look at what the body is able to do and how it's able to protect itself so the t-cell responses responses against the spike protein remember we talked about the spike protein these are the specific uh, uh, messengers that will be able to trigger an immunological response so the cd the cd8 plus uh, t cells are the main inflammatory cells and they play a vital role in the virus clearance so inflammation will help in clearing this virus the CD4-8 T cells, CD4, uh, uh, CD4-8, CD4-4 uh, T cells, and natural killer cells also play a very big role in trying to ensure that the host is protected. Well, let's look at the role of the B cells. The B cells are major producers. Now, of course, they mature to um, to other cells, and they will be able to produce very important. A immunoglobulin that is IgG and IgA immunoglobulin or antibodies antibodies of course antibodies uh, are not that long lasting and it provides passive immunity and the duration of protective immunity may last 6 to 12 months so that means that once the body has been able to produce the antibodies that antibody will not last for too long so the appearance of antibody in serum and nasal secretion is followed by resolution of the infection. So when you, somebody is infected and that's why you have a symptomatic patient, that means that they have produced enough antibodies to be able to clear the virus. And that will be able to protect them for at least the next 6 to 12 months. And of course this immune uh, wanes within a year or two. And that's why we could say... Uh, so, uh, humor immunity is not long lasting humor immunity is facilitated by the cells that will be able to produce specific immunoglobulin that will protect you for a shorter time epidemiology coronavirus disease uh, 2019 is caused by SARS uh, COVID-2 a newly emerged coronavirus that was first recognized in Wuhan in December 2019 that is where it began so basically when you're talking about coronavirus that is where it began and now it's spread all over the world so let's look at at risk population or group who is at risk of developing the severe form of coronavirus everybody is at risk but who will develop the more severe form that may also result to death these are people with the underlying health conditions among covid 19 cases with severe diseases and death uh, that, uh, of course these are people with the underlying health condition for example people who are diabetic people who are hiv people who have hiv virus that is going towards the aids status and people who are old the elderly and people who are hypertensive and with so many conditions that predisposes the immune system to be very weak people whose uh, 
whose immune system is defective in one way or the other. Underlying conditions include, of course, hypertension, diabetic, cardiovascular diseases, chronic respiratory diseases, immune, immunocompromised status, cancer, and obesity. When you say immunocompromised status, we talk about a situation where the body is not able to protect itself against infectious diseases. Pre-existing medical conditions such as coronary pulmonary disease, malignancy, neurological disorder, congenital heart diseases, chromosomal abnormality, and chronic kidney diseases make you to be at risk of developing the severe form of this infection. The elderly who are 60 and above have a higher chance of developing the severe form of this virus should they be infected. Diagnosis. Diagnosis uh, mostly we talk about cold caused by coronavirus cannot be distinguished clinically from other cold in any other form. So we say most of the time we talk about uh, when you say somebody has a common cold. How can you differentiate a common cold caused by rhinovirus, respiratory syncytia virus, RSV, or any other viruses that may cause a respiratory infection? Or maybe even a bacterial infection such as uh, uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae. How will you say this is, this is coronavirus, this is caused by uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae? This one is caused by rhinovirus. How can we distinguish the three? The only way we can distinguish the three is through laboratory diagnosis that may be made through or on the basis of antibody titers or nucleic acid hybridization techniques, including PCR, which is currently now being used in testing and confirming the virus in the samples. So what will be the samples that we will collect from you? From upper respiratory tract infection, infection, of course, we'll be able to collect, uh, if, we sus if, if we develop complication for upper respiratory tract infection, then we'll collect the nasopharyngeal swab, naso aspirate, nasopharyngeal samples. For lower respiratory tract infection, if you're developing com uh, uh, complications that affect the lower respiratory tract uh, of course, infection will collect what you call endotracheal aspirate, bronchoalveolar lavage, lavage fluid, and if we can use also your blood to collect serum or whole blood, so that you can be able to to isolate the antibodies or get the virus that has might be in your blood as well. So let's look at how nasopharyngeal swab uh, is collected. When you're looking at the image, that is where we are going to place our swab. It's very deep. So you should be able to target that area and using all the sanitation standards, making sure that you don't contaminate the sample and making sure that whoever is collecting this is covered and is not uh, is well sanitized and this sample will represent what it intends to be tested from this person. So basically that's how it is done. Nasopharyngeal swab, oropharyngeal swab, that is how it is done. So you swab in the posterior oropharynges. COVID-19 care plan. So the World Health Organization has already created a care plan. What do we do in case we suspect somebody has coronavirus? Of course, we normally talk about suspect cases, contact tracing, whoever was in contact with a person who has been identified to have coronavirus need always to be isolated. And if we test you and find you have coronavirus, then we we'll have to take you to a quarantine center. And here we are talking about a health facility where all the provisions will be made available for you. Emergency medical attention can be given to you. But for non a non-asymptomatic patient can be taken care of at the home. But that place, you have to ensure that you, don't, you are not able to spread the virus to another person. 
So I Health Worker will be visiting you, ensuring that you are well and taking care of any severe complication that may arise. And you are provided with specific nutrition that will help you to develop a nice immunity against the virus. I think most of these things that are happening here, I think you get your time and be able to read. I'll provide this link for this material by the end of this lecture so that you can be able to look and see for yourself how actually should we take care of our patient who is suspected to have COVID-19 or who might have gotten in contact with the person who was identified to have had coronavirus uh, in him or her. Let's look at prevention and control measures. At, when you look at prevention and uh, control measures, it is looked as at individual, household, community, or at the government level. Of course, the government is giving a lot of directive to ensure that, to tell us what to do, what to, to be able to do so that we are able to be protected against uh, contracting coronavirus. So the government directives are very clear. I know all of us know them. Sanitize, wearing the mask, ensuring that there is this distance between you and the next person. Other distance is 1.5 meters. I'll be able to explain some of these measures, why they are being thought to be, uh, to be that way. So disinfectant, mostly 0 0.5 chlorine solution is used. Ethyl or isopropyl alcohol 70%. Improved hydrogen peroxide is used as one of the disinfectant. Why soap is effective in prevention of coronavirus? Because the virus is self-assembled a very small particle in which the weakest link is the lipid by layer. We say the virus is enveloped. And we say when the virus exits the host, it exits through budding. And with the exit, it comes out with the cell, uh, a cell membrane of the, vi of the infected host cell. And the cell membrane is a bilipid, a lipid bilayer in nature. And we know very well that lipid and soap are not good friends. So if part of the component of the virus is lipid in nature, then soap is a very powerful tool to actually dismantle the virus. And once the virus is dismantled, then it becomes less infectious not actually less infectious but it becomes totally non-infectious soap dissolves the fat membrane and the virus falls apart becoming inactive that is a fact so the best soap should be the one that lathers well the one that is able to lather and form a nice lather and will be able to clean and dismantle the virus very nicely that means that we have to take time wash your hand don't be in a hurry we say the minimum time you should spend hand washing should be five minutes. By that time, it is scientifically proven that the virus will have been dislodged from the surface that is from your hand. So that's how we do hand washing. I think hand washing is a, a skill that I want to demonstrate later on in my video. Why alcohol-based product? be used to prevent ourselves from the virus Con uh, contain the virus contain okay contain a high percentage of alcohol solution so and kill the virus of course we're talking about 60 to 80 percent of ethanol this is able to kill the virus so coronavirus is an envelope virus meaning that it has a coating around it which the alcohol can attack so the coating is, is uh, lipid in nature. So whereas you need to literally soak the virus on ethanol for a brief moment and wipe and wipes or rubbing a gel on the hand does not guarantee that you, that you soak every corner of the skin on your hand effectively enough. So that means that you should not also be in a hurry to sanitize with alcohol. Take your time. Make sure that you have sanitized every part of your hand comprehensively as much as you can. I'll advise you that you use the same same five minutes
to make sure that we are rubbing our hand in every part. Why social distancing as a way of preventing ourselves from getting coronavirus? When you cough or especially when you sneeze, tiny droplets from the airway can fly up to 10 meters. The larger ones are thought to be the main coronavirus carrier and they can go at least 2 meters. Recommended physical distance is 1.5 meters. It is that distance that needs to be kept. So that as I talk to you, and I, as I might be accidentally cough, I give you the small droplets that don't contain the virus. But the bigger droplets will fall down and they will become, they may uh, not be able to get to you and you may not get the virus. Why should you not touch your nose, mouth, eyes and surfaces that are deemed to be contaminated with the virus? This tiny droplets ends on surfaces and often dry out quickly, but the virus remain active. Human skin is an ideal surface for the virus. It is organic and the protein and the fatty acids on the dead cells on the surface interact with the virus. When you touch, say, a steel surface with a virus particle on it, it will stick to your skin and hence get transferred on your hand. If then you touch your face, especially your eyes, nostril or mouth, you can get infected. Simple and clear. So let's talk about uh, probable vaccine candidates for the virus. When you're talking about vaccines, we're talking about what can we do to be able to protect ourselves. We have what we call natural immunity. So those who get infected, they develop antibodies and it was stated that the antibodies that you develop can protect you for 6 up to 12 months. But what about those who are not, have not been infected? Because we don't assume that everybody will get infected in the future and the virus is with us. So you have to make a, a vaccine. When you say a whole inactivated virus, that means that we have to isolate the virus, grow it in the lab, and then inactivate it using chemicals so that the virus becomes inactive. And these virus are the ones that are injected to you that will now trigger an immunological response. And then you will be able to produce antibodies and specific memory cells that will help to produce, of course, uh, long-lasting immunity, both cellular and humoral immunity. So which means that when you talk about humoral immunity, of course, we are talking about production of antibodies that is immediate and we're talking about cell immunities production of specific cells that are going to be creating memory so future infections should they happen to you then it is easier for the immune cells to be able to mobilize tenfold the number of antibodies the amount of antibodies the amount of cells that will be able to kill and inactivate this virus within your system and that makes you to be safe and that makes you to be very okay should you get the virus in the near future. Live alternated virus. Live alternated virus. We are talking about live alternated. So this virus has been uh, been actually been made in a way that it cannot cause disease to you. So we genetically uh, remove the virulent uh, genes of the virus, so the virus cannot actually cause any problem to you. It has been modified genetically. The virus the same, but specific uh, uh, characteristics that make you to develop the severe form of the virus have been removed. It's not the same virus because the the specific uh, ability of this virus through the lab uh, production mechanism has been rendered useless. So that means that the virus will be able to trigger immunological responses but not may cause, it may not cause a you to be sick in the end of the day because you'll be able to clear it. Protein subunit. We talked about uh, some specific uh, component of the virus. If we can go back and remind ourselves, when you're looking at the components of the virus, we say we have the S protein. That is the spike glycoprotein. 
we can produce specific proteins that look that have the specific component of the spike glycoprotein this what triggers the immunological response so which means that uh, this protein can be this virus can be made in big quantity but we can be able to isolate this specific glycoprotein s the spike glycoprotein and make it in such a way that uh, it is composition is made in bigger quantity and that is made available as a vaccine so that means that we can isolate specific component of virus and say we are only picking the glycoprotein and this one is what is made to be our vaccine or we look at this protein how does it look like can you make a specific this protein synthetically in the lab that actually can be able to trigger this immunological response and that's what we mean by a subunit vaccine okay so replication and not replicating viral vectors expressing SARS-CoV-2 protein as well as DNA and RNA technologies delivering gene sequences that encode SARS-CoV protein that then are produced by host cell. So I think this is also a new way of making uh, the vaccine. So what happens is that um, these specific uh, vectors are able to be inserted into you and you'll be able to produce this specific component of the virus and this will trigger the immunological responses that will be very protective in future should you get uh, infected and actually this way it does not cause disease to you because these vectors will produce specific components that are a look alike that will mimic the real virus and in this way you'll be able to produce specific antibodies specific memory cells that will be able to protect you in the near future okay these are my references and um i'll be able to be able to share with you in my link on my channel so that you can be able to read more and be able to understand how coronavirus can be protected how coronavirus can be managed how uh, coronavirus can be prevented within a country or within the world so that in future we are free of coronavirus thank you so much if you have any question i think you can be able to comment down below if you have any challenge you can inbox me we can be able to talk for our student at north coast medical training college you know where to get me through mlm you can be able to chat to me i'll be able to help you understand what COVID-19 is. Thank you.